guys, you're welcome. Thanks for clicking. My name is Bukumi. Debates over integrating devout Muslims into society are not unique to the United States. Effective today, it is illegal to wear a burqa in France or a niqab like this. A Muslim veil that reveals only the eyes. The new law drew protest and confusion on the streets of Paris. Two women stepping out in their niqabs and drawing a crowd were arrested for staging an unauthorized protest. The French government has called the veils, and I quote, a new form of enslavement, end quote, not acceptable on its soil. Many Muslims are enraged, but not all. I'm joined by Hiba Ahmed, a writer for the blog Muslim Matters, who's against the ban. She's in Albuquerque. And Mona El Tahawi, a columnist on Arab and Muslim issues, who wants to see the ban extended everywhere. She's joining me from Washington. Welcome to you both. Let me begin by, if I might, by quoting President Sarkozy of France in his justification for the law. It's kind of a remarkable statement. He says, and I quote, this is the president of France, the burqa is not a religious symbol. It's a sign of enslavement, of debaseness. I want to say this solemnly, the burqa will not be welcome on the territory of the French Republic. We cannot accept in our country women imprisoned behind a mask, deprived of all social life, of their identity. So Mona, let me start with you. You want to extend this ban across the world. Do you agree with President Sarkozy that merely because somebody wants to dress like this, they choose to dress like this, they shouldn't be permitted to do so? You know, Elliot, I detest Nicolas Sarkozy. I consider him right-wing and racist, but I also detest the niqab and I detest the face veil. And I say this as a Muslim woman. I think it, it represents an ideology that does not believe in Muslim women's rights to do anything but choose to cover her face. And I find that I believe that the niqab dangerously equates piety with the disappearance of women and so I support banning it everywhere because I don't it's not in the Quran it's not an obligation for a Muslim woman to cover her face and my my talk with you now with you seeing my face is going to be very different than if I was sitting here with my face covered I believe the human face is central to communication okay Mona the only thing I would observe and I, I want to give uh, Hiba a chance to jump in of course but the, I heard you use the singular personal pronoun I many times in that I have no doubt you believe that but why should your beliefs ban other people from wearing what they want to wear. That's what I don't get. Heba, explain to me why you think the ban is a bad idea. Um, I think that it's a bad idea because I think it's yet another example of men telling women how to dress, how to live their life. It's another way uh, to try to control women and to, to take it to a government level and to try to legislate the way that a woman dresses is not just wrong and against human rights, but it really violates the whole basis that the, the democ democracy and democratic countries are based on. This is a free choice. This is something that I choose to wear. I disagree that it's some right-wing idea. Ideology. It is something that is permitted in Islam. I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and I am free to do whatever I want, and this is a what choice that, that I want to make. And just because somebody doesn't uh, accept my interpretation of Islam or personally like it, doesn't mean that we can use laws to violate people's freedom of expression he, he, and freedom of religion. He, but let me just ask you this. When you go to the airport, you understand there are going to be obligations. They're going to have to check you for security like they check all the rest. When you get a driver's license, do they take a picture with or without the, the, uh, your, your veil on? Absolutely. I want everyone to know that as a Muslim woman, as a Muslim in America, I am just as concerned about safety and security as everybody else. And I have no problem whatsoever accommodating any security issues that come about when I enter a bank, when I go to the airport, when I go to the DMV, I show my face. And actually in Islam, we are required to show our identity when we're in a court system giving testimony. This is absolutely something that is essential for the security and identification of people. But it, that doesn't mean that I should be banned completely from what I choose to do. Okay, Mona, let me jump in here. There are lots of types of dress that I look at and I don't like them. I think they're degrading. I think they're oppressive. I, you know, lots of things I see teenagers wearing that, you know, I'm now viewed as, as old fashioned by a lot of, you know, my kids perhaps. I don't go around saying we should pass a law banning it. Isn't that fundamentally violative of the First Amendment? What possible reason can there be legally to, mm -hmm. to say to somebody, you can't dress the way you want to dress? 
Actually, Elliot, the government does tell people how they can and can't dress all the time. You cannot walk outside naked. There are many states here in the U.S. where three or more people cannot be together in public with wearing a face mask. So the government actually does legislate over our wardrobe, but no, but everybody conveniently forgets that. I would like to ask Heba, you know, once I'm done talking, um, if she works, because we've been on media shows together where we've been on opposite ends of this argument. And I know from what she said before that once she started covering her face, she stopped working so my argument is and this is not just about I I understand what you what the point that you were making earlier Elliot feminist groups many women's rights groups have made the point that what the niqab does in a society especially for Muslim women is that it creates a spectrum where that is the pinnacle of piety and that is the good Muslim woman and so of course it has an, it affects me in France where this ban is going in effect Muslim women's rights groups there support it because they find that Muslim women who, who live in, in the French housing projects have been put under the tremendous pressure by the Muslim right wing to give in to the niqab and when they speak out they are told it's basically they become these political pawns yeah, but, that's but, why but, I said Mohamed. I oppose Sarkozy but I oppose this on women because what choice do women have besides covering their face mm -hmm. this ideology doesn't recognize mm -hmm. Muslim women's rights Mon, I just have to push you on one thing here there are certain prohibitions on the way people dress or you you mentioned nudity that don't don't dress that are in fact imposed upon us by law but none of them that I'm aware of relates to a specific religion and says if you are a devout member of a religion you cannot dress in a way that is you are obligated to to practice your religion your choice of faith can you think of any example like that because I can think of a thousand other laws if this were upheld that suddenly we would limit all sorts of things that people do for their religious beliefs because we don't agree with it wouldn't well, that see, be a very dangerous thing to do? See, this is, this is, I think, where these right-wing interpretations of religion get a free pass. Because everybody says, well, it's my religious obligation. It's my religious right to do this. Let's, let's look really at what we're talking about here. We're talking about the disappearance of women justified in the name of them becoming closer to God. So the closer you want to become to God, the, the, more, the less of you, but, the more you disappear. But, but this Mona, is not I don't, accepted I don't feel by the majority of Muslim schools at all. Well, one I at a time, we have but, disagree. Guys, one at a time, Habib, Hiba, excuse me, jump in tell us has anybody forced you to do this is this something you're doing of your own free nobody will? has nobody has forced me to do this and I really have to disagree with the statistics that Mona is trying to put forth because studies have shown that there are only 2,000 women in France that wear the niqab the majority of them are converts who converted to Islam and are voluntarily choosing to do it this is my choice nobody can force me to take it off I would not take it off even if you paid me to do it and the fact of the matter is that the, there is never I have never met a single Muslim woman in all of my travels around the world that is being forced to wear it. She, uh, I, I understand Mona does not like it and does not want to wear it personally, but she keeps talking about her own feelings about it and she wants to use the law to support it. If she wants a diversity in Islamic belief, then she has to accept my version just like she wants me to accept hers. M Mona, let me ask you this question. Do you have any evidence to support your statement that women are forced to wear this? And let me ask you this. If, if women are being forced to do something they don't want to do, there is recourse other than and banning this entire mode of dress that is chosen, as we just heard from Hibba, by people who do choose to wear it of their own free will. Well, you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia. Heba says that she's traveled the world and she's never met a woman who's been forced to wear it. I lived in Saudi Arabia where millions of women are forced to cover their face. But now that the argument will be, well, that's in Saudi Arabia, not in France. What choice does a woman have when she's told she will burn in hell if she doesn't cover every inch of her body? What kind of a choice is that? So, of course, these women I, who I've convert to this that. ideology... I've never heard anybody the, say that. The women who convert to this ideology, who are then told that this is how to be a good Muslim woman, to be close to God, to avoid hellfire, is there really a choice in that? And I believe when you have a law like this, you know, I told you, I detest Sarkozy. I consider him racist. But I will not sacrifice Muslim women's rights in order to uphold the Muslim right wing, which I believe is misogynist. With a law like that, a woman can tell her husband or any male relative who is forcing her to dress like this, the law says, I don't have to dress Mo -mo -mona, like this. Mona, Mona, let's not deal with Saudi Arabia, different customs, different laws. We have Thank a First you. Amendment. No, I was talking about France. Have, I was wait, wait, talking wait, about France. On. Wait, hold on one second. In the United States, we have a First Amendment that gives people the right to practice religion as they wish. Do you not think that a law that in the United States that would ban this form of dress would violate the First Amendment permission to practice religion as each individual sees fit? Well, this, this comes back to religion again. Everything is allowed just because someone says it's their religious belief. You know what no, I No, no, no. Mo Mo Mona, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Hold one second. It's banned or permitted until there is some compelling state interest on the other side. But it's got to be an overwhelming interest. What is the overwhelming interest that would justify us in banning a type of dress that people choose as a result of their religion. 
Well, the, all the reasons I just gave you, but I will repeat, I believe that this is genuinely harmful to Muslim women because it creates this pinnacle of piety in which a Muslim woman is told, this is the closest you can get to God, and she's disappeared. I'm no longer here. You don't even know who I am. The face is central to communication. Okay. And not just that, it objectifies well, women. Mona. The pinnacle Mona, of objectification. Look, I agree with much of what you're saying, but not as the matter of law. Hey, but, you know, you get the last word. You haven't gotten a fair time on this one. Give it the best 15 seconds you've got. Thank you. Um, basically, I, I want people to know that when I choose to cover this way, it's because I am fighting against a systematic oppression against women in which women's bodies are being sexualized and objectified. This is a different perspective and a different form of empowerment in which I think when I'm in public, my sexuality is in my control and people have to deal with my brain and who I really am and not judge me by my body. And if we want to really talk about the oppressive situation of women, let's talk about all of the eating disorders, all of the plastic surgery, all of the un healthy diets that are, are that are being done all in the name of having the perfect body to me this is liberating and this is empowering Mona keeps saying I believe I believe I believe well we don't make laws based on what Mona believes or what anybody believes. all right guys it's based on look, whether or not this is clearly not an issue we're gonna resolve in the next 10 seconds I want to thank you both well I understand the Muslim woman's point of view right I understand where she's coming from but she's saying that she's wearing the hijab just to avoid oppression. I don't understand. Okay, that's knee, knee, but what do they call it? Wearing that kind of long veil that covers your nose, the only thing we get to see is your eyes. Then how do we know your identity? I'm kind of in support of the other lady because knowing your, knowing your identity is very important. You can wear your hijab and your face is still shown. Fine, well. But the hijab in which you cover all your body from head to toe, it's nobody can recognize you they will not be able if if you are in trouble nobody knows your real identity if you keep wearing this kind of thing let's imagine that okay you dress like this to a place of work or you go for a program and you know how we didn't know who you are i understand that you know islam you know you need to dress nice you need to dress in a modesty manner but to me this is quite too much because this happens in this life now. Some people even wear this kind of long veil to do devious things. Some people do it in which they would pretend to be Muslim. They will wear the veil all because they want to involve in some dangerous activity just so that people will not recognize them. So if Muslim women wear this kind of hijab, how do we recognize you? Yes, she said if she go, she's going to travel and there's a need for them to scan her, she will remove her veil. And But if you remove your veil, they take a picture of you and you wear your veil back, how will they know? Maybe if something happened, God forbid, how will they know? Apart from your family or your husband or your friends, nobody knows the real you. Nobody knows how your body is, your face. To me, sometimes when I see ladies dressed like that, it's like as if they are not confident in themselves. Maybe they are trying to cover some scars on their face or they think they are not that beautiful enough or they have low esteem, low, low self-esteem. Like To me, it's like you have this low self-esteem because why? I'm not, that is their religion, right? But too much of everything to me is bad. Some people, they are, there are some people that anywhere they go to, they must wear that complete hijab. They must wear that veil all through. But it's, it limits you from communicating with people. People, because I noticed that thing that people will find it difficult to move closer to you and come because they don't know the real you. Because your facial, your you no, know, your face is very, very important when it comes to you getting to know people. Like the woman said, there are a lot of cases in which people wear that veil and they, they, something bad happened to them and nobody can you know nobody knows their whereabouts nobody can recognize them because they don't know their face they don't know who they are so that's that they just go missing and people forget about them because they don't know your identity so it's a form of knowing your identity it's not a bad thing to wear a veil but me i don't i don't really support women when all this that's why people say oh it's a form it looks, it looks as if they are being oppressed or they are being forced to do so because that was the mindset i also had until I watched this video, even though this woman said, oh, that she's not being oppressed to do it. She's doing it willingly and, you no, know, she, she's trying to dress in that manner so that she will not attract um, umlos 
uh, she will not attract, so that she, so, okay, she's wearing the, all those, she's wearing the veil so that to avoid harassment, sexual harassment or oppression, but men, you can still dress, you know, you can still dress, you can still cover yourself and nobody will you know, harass you. You can, like, I see some people wear hijab, long veil, but their face will show. That is what I'm talking about. But you covering your face and we are only seeing your eyeball. We don't know your real identity. This is so painful to know that this woman, you know, she already has this belief. And when you have a belief, eh, you are limited to some information. You don't want to accept what other people tell you. I understand her own point of view, but she should at least listen to the woman. Get to understand that it helps you to you know. If we are talking about life, so that if in case you are in trouble, people can be of help to you. People can know who you, the real you. Just imagine her having this interview from morning, uh, ten minutes interview, and I don't know her real face. If I see her in public, I can't even recognize her, even though she's not wearing hijab. And I go to her to visit a Muslim friend, and I, and she said, "Oh, I'm the one that spoke in this." TV station. How will I know she's she's really the one? Because I, I, your identity is being hidden. Well, they banned it. I don't know. Uh, this was a, an old video. They banned it in France some years back. I'm sure it might have been lifted by now, but people should reduce the rate they wear this kind of veil. Because sometimes when I see... So there, was a day, there was a day I went to a, uh, a mark, I went to market to get something, and I saw this woman wearing long veil covering her... Um, it's only an eyebrow I was seeing. And she was, she was having one kind of old doll. I was like, I, I, when she passed near me, there was a time I was buying something and she was standing close to me and I could not withstand the old doll I was perceiving from the clothes. You know, I, I forget the fact that it was having old doll. Apart from that, what really made me sad was like, in my mind I was like, what's going on? Like, how do we know this woman's identity? Is, it, is she being forced to do so? Are they telling her to cover her beauty? It's like, they are just trying to tell her, oh, cover your beauty. Don't let any man see your beauty. Don't let any man see your skin. No, you cover everywhere. And to me, that's way too much. In my opinion, I need to be sincere, guys. As a non-Muslim, I'm in support of this other woman. I'm not saying the Muslim woman is wrong per se, but at least limit the way you wear the veil. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.